Here's a brief overview of choosing a topic. In the real world, you're going to have to choose your topics, so you will be in this class too. We're going to talk a little bit about how to do that, and after this, you're going to take a look at an audience analysis, and those two things together should give you a pretty good idea of how to choose a topic that your audience will get into, that they'll enjoy. Let's take it from the top here. Choosing a topic. First decision you're going to make is your general topic. Now, very often in the world outside of this classroom, they'll give you that. They'll tell you they want to tell you to talk about the college, or they want to talk, you want, they want that. <laughs> they want you to talk about something you're into or something you've done, or they want you to talk about something you've researched, whatever it is. They will give you a broad topic, but it'll be way too much for a speech. Okay. But the other thing you need to know is whether the speech is supposed to be expository, informative, or rhetorical, persuasive, or an entertainment or special occasion speech, one of those ceremonial speeches like we just did. Find out those two things and be very clear about them. Then you're ready to get down to choosing your topic, your specific topic. This is going to be the narrow focus of what you actually do. Please choose something you already know something about. Don't try to learn something just for a speech. Chances are you don't have time. You'll end up not knowing anything more than your audience does when you get in there and you won't be solid in your knowledge. So, Go for something that you already feel good about. Not only will you be more confident, less stage fright when you speak, okay, but you'll be available to answer questions, discuss it, talk about it, all of that. And choose something that interests you. Now, this is maybe something where we, uh, where this course speech differs from an English class in English, when you do a research paper, it really doesn't matter too much if it interests you. But in this class, it does. Because in public speaking, you have to get your audience interested. And you can't do that unless you care about what you're speaking about. It has to matter to you. It has to matter that your audience is with you on this, that they know what you know, that you're moving them or informing them or telling them something that really is important. And I can't tell you how to fake that yeah. and without teaching you acting, and I'm not going to teach you acting in this course. So go ahead and choose something that interests you. And then choose something that also interests your audience. Pick an angle or a way of looking at it that attaches to their needs and wants. We'll talk about those a little bit in the uh, audience analysis section of this that's coming up but find something in it that they're going to get out of it, that is going to interest them, that's going to engage them, that's going to get them involved. And then figure out what you can do with the time and resources available. Lots of, I mean, maybe you guys have been in a classroom. Classroom has pretty much everything you need. Out there in the world, not so much. For instance, if you can't do slides, then please don't do a speech about art, not even about an artist. If you can't show us some of the work of a visual artist or talk about it, then you end up doing something really strange like, well, there was a, a big smash of red that rode up to the top left side, but it was spattered in small dribbles of yellow and down in the corner, they had a green block. What are you doing? It's the 21st century. We need, we need to see slides. And we won't accept anything less. Same with music. If you're doing a speech about music or a musician, give us some samples. Give us a taste. Let us know what we're supposed to be hearing aesthetically when you talk about those things. And time. Please be aware of time. 
I'm guessing that many of you have picked a topic for an English class that was way too much. Okay. You spent half your time trying to figure out how to narrow it down. Do that up front. Do something that if it's a five minute speech or a 10 minute speech or a 30 minute speech, whatever it is, you can cover it thoroughly and well with new information for your audience in that time available. Please don't regurgitate what they already know. You need to have, be able to get into something deeper than that, something more interesting than that in the time available. Let me flip back for a moment to interesting your audience. Because I think this is another thing that it, they tell you in English class, but they don't seem to be too worried about. But it does matter here. In an English class, the person you have to interest, if you have to interest anybody, is the professor who's grading whatever it is you're writing. And professors are trained, English professors are trained in what's called interested reading. That means they know how to approach any paper in front of them as if they were interested. In this class, you don't necessarily have people who understand how to do interested listening, except me. You've got to appeal to the people here, what really interests them. We're not going to fake interest in something. Now, this course is kind of cool in that regard because I think I can safely assume everybody in this class is a curious person. We all like learning things. We're here. Okay? We're in college. So pretty much anything you can bring to us, you can probably find a way to get us interested. Not so much if, say, you're speaking to a bunch of nurses. Then you're pretty much going to have to talk about something that involves nursing. But here it's pretty wide open. There's still probably some topics that you couldn't get anybody interested in. Um, marigolds, for instance, there's little yellow flowers with petals on them. They're used decoratively in gardens, I guess. Pretty sure nobody here cares about marigolds. But really, this is a pretty wide open group. So please pick your specific topic based on what you already know about, what interests you, what you, your audience is interested in, or maybe you can get them interested. We'll talk about that. And what you can do with the time and resources available. One more consideration. Oops. <laughs> Information load. How much information is your audience getting compared to their capacity, basically how much time and how much grounding do they have to take that information in? Generally, if the audience capacity to take in the information you're presenting is less than the information load you're putting out there, okay, that's called information overload. People go to sleep, people nod off, people start daydreaming. You know you do. And this isn't an exact science, but it is something you want to take into account. Also, the audience capacity, if the audience capacity is greater than the information load, then you get information underload and people are bored and they start doodling or watching Netflix over your shoulder or whatever. Yeah. What you're looking for is the audience capacity to roughly be the same as the amount of information you're giving them, the information load. Um, and finally here, one more decision. 
once you have gotten that down to your specific topic, write it out in a single, simple sentence, your thesis sentence. And in this class, I know professors are all over the map when it comes to a thesis statement. Right? We mean all sorts of different things. For this class, it is a single, simple sentence of the message you expect your audience to leave with. For instance, my audience will understand the basics of grooming your dog. My audience will understand the atmosphere on Jupiter. Single, simple sentence. That'll be your focus. You're going to tell us that in your speeches so that we're clear about what you're doing. But that will help you focus your whole speech on precisely what it is you want to do. And you won't go off topic, you won't get weird. It'll all be about that. Choosing a topic. It's on you, as it would be out there in the world. Thank you.